Yeah, Shane, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? I'm doing fine. How are you guys? Good. I, I know that this is your favorite thing to do, so I kind of <laughs> not not that not that you don't like talking to people. Just that this isn't like your comfort zone. So I appreciate no. you uh, agreeing to uh, to do this with us. So no, no problem. Oh. Gotta gotta make yourself uncomfortable once in a while. That's right. It, yeah, don't get comfortable. That's uh, we we've talked about that before. So um, cool. What's I guess let's we'll we'll do the easy one first. Uh, what's what's up new product wise this year? What's uh, what's what's coming down the pike here for for guys this year? Um. Well, we we started selling our uh, smaller ninja board late last last year um, okay. through the season, but. Um, that we have some several colors, uh, quite a few new colors of spoons and spin doctors, maybe not necessarily that are our own, but, um, you know, we're doing customs all the time for different shops. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all kinds of new stuff floating around. Um, we're going to be coming with, uh, some new, new spoon colors and stuff next week. Not, uh, not anything crazy, but a few things, uh, we're having a little trouble keeping up right now because of, you know, supply chain things. So we're just extremely busy and, and, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing, but a problem nonetheless. Yeah. I think let's go back to that. Cause you and I talked about that on the phone here uh, earlier in the week, just cause we, we commiserate with each other a little bit about, uh, you know, the, some of the challenges we face as manufacturers, but, um, can you can you talk about the ninja board development some? I know that you've been working on that for several years and kind of where that came from and and how that, you know, kind of how you guys put that together. I mean, I know that that was something that you guys worked on, you know, on your boat just in in, you know, just from pure experience. So, I mean, can you kind of walk us through that process a little bit? Yeah, so we uh, you know, we have a really great uh, partner in all of our plastic stuff. You know, everything everything we build for the most part is built right here in Michigan. And uh, we work with Grand Haven Custom Molding and we partnered up with, uh, with them guys are fishermen too. So uh, we worked on that project together for the Ninja Board. And uh, basically there was like five of us that worked on it for several months. And, uh, you know, just re revising and, and making a, a board that, that we thought would be uh, the best. and. So we've tweaked a, a lot of different things and we're real happy with the product we've come up with, but um, we've been selling the larger one now for, this will be the third, well, we've been selling it for about two years. And then this last one we came out with halfway through the summer last year. But um, basically we, all the, all the things that we've seen with other boards we've used, uh, we fixed and, and made a better animal. And 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 the main selling feature there for you is is one handed race, right? That's that's kind of yeah. Basically, uh, it's, it's probably hard to see on this camera, but um, basically, one button here releases both the front and the back release at the same time. So you literally just have to, you know, with the motion, you can take the board off, so you don't need two guys anymore. A, a guy fishing by himself can can use the board um, and not not have that transitional period of taking the board off and losing the fish. Um, plus they, uh, you know, we've made some improvements so the board doesn't dive. It doesn't, uh, it really toes well. It's it's kind of in between like a, uh, now I'm talking about our salmon board, you know, the bigger version, but it's kind of in between um, what uh, other people have sold as a large board and other people in, in, in a smaller board. So it's kind of a, a good all around board. Um, it pulls really well from anything from a 150 to a 600 copper. So, so how does that, the, like the, I guess what size would you use for, for, for what application? I mean, you know, so, so like our smaller board is, is kind of focused to the walleye market and it's got a, a a flag on it here which is completely the spring is adjustable for the flag tension but um us salmon guys don't really use the flag so but this board here is perfect for anywhere from a flat line to i'd say a full core or like a 200 copper and then the larger board 
Um, this is perfect, really from like 100 copper up to 600 copper. Um, and it, it tows really, really nicely um, with all those and anything in between. Yeah, so if if we get on the water again this year, you will be reeling in all of the 600 copper. So that's, that's, <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know if you've got a chance to do that one yet, but yeah, you, you can. That 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 rods that rods an emergency only situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So did you ever? Have you ever embraced my idea for the ninja board ad that where a ninja comes flying out of the boat and and have you embraced? I really I really want to see that get produced. I I think that would be really cool. Well, we're gonna uh, put you on as the director and we can make that happen. And you and you can be the ninja. <laughs> I'll be a ninja. I, I look good in a ninja suit. <laughs> <laughs> but the more uh, face covering, the more better, right? Yep. All right, we've got uh, some questions coming in. Uh, Dale DeCourt is uh, first. He wants to thank you for the support of the kids tournament. You guys rock, and we appreciate you supporting a great cause. And then he asks a question on glow spoons. Is there any upgrades in technology on paint holding a longer glow? Yeah, actually, actually, we've uh, been working hard the last year, and we've we've uh, refined our glow spoons quite a bit um actually i have two two new ones here it's kind of hard in this situation to see right um, to see what's going on but we have completely redone our glow finish and uh um for the better so i think i think uh guys will really like that moving forward we've we've redone all our glow spoons so yeah there's it's this is like a, a double process now that we're using and uh they're substantially better than what we've sold in the past as far as the the brightness or how long they glow or what i mean kind of what's what are kind they? of all kind of all the above the, all the, above. the uh, holding the finish holding um the Dur brightness, durability you mean yeah the durability the long longevity of the glow um it's it's come a long ways in the last year or so but we're always constantly improving um or trying to so can you tell us a little bit about the company i think that uh a lot of people would love to hear the story i mean it's a it's a family company it's something that that's been passed on now through the generations can you tell us just a little bit about dream weaver as a company and kind of how it's evolved um so i guess you know, this this company originally started out. It was called Pentwater Lure Company, um, and uh, uh, Roger Bogner bought that, and then he was selling under the the Pentwater name for several years. Probably somewhere in the '90s, um, he teamed up with uh, with my dad, and uh, they changed the name to Dreamweaver Lure Company, and uh, and that's kind of the long. You know, it's a much longer story than that, but we, we only have uh, 13 more minutes. So, um, but, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, you know, we've been constantly evolving and, and growing for, for, you know, almost 30 years now or longer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I think it's a cool story in that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's truly kind of a, a American dream type of story. And, and it's a, it's a company that again, has stayed with the family and you guys are kind of running it. And uh, I think it's a, it's just a cool deal to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think there's kind of a community of manufacturers and, and certainly Dreamweaver is one of them, but I mean, you know, you've got a lot of family company, you know, like chip, for example, you know, over at, you know, Wolverine and things like that. it's like, everybody's competitors, but they're good competitors. I mean, they're the kind of people that you like. I mean, they're not, they're not your, you know, we'll, we'll call them frenemies and things like that. But, but I think that's just really common for whatever reason in the Great Lakes market where there's a lot of people that, um, you know, maybe you have, you know, similar products, but it's it, there, there really is a community there. And, and, and most of those are family run. We were talking about buffets earlier. I think, <laughs> It's one thing you'll see at these shows is Shane, like Shane likes a good buffet. <laughs> yeah. 
I know well, George likes the buffet too. It's one of those things that you know you'll see guys kind of all sitting together at dinner. Yeah, you know, right. That's, exactly. That's kinda at these shows, yeah. if you go across the street to wherever the popular dinner spot is, everybody will kind of be sitting together there. Yeah. No. Absolutely. We always, you know, I'm. I consider a lot of a lot of the people that are selling the same things as us are our friends, and I talk to chip a few few times a year and and uh you know that's the unique thing i mean uh, my favorite line from from trevor is uh coke needs pepsi right that's we're all driving each other so uh competition is not not a bad thing no it's cool there, there's some uh the cast of characters and and i don't know you know you know i don't know if this exists in like the toilet paper market or not but like the, <laughs> of characters uh in the fishing world uh you know truth might be stranger than fiction and and somebody like one of my first sales managers told me you know that you'll be fine as long as you remember that normal people don't sell fishing tackle i don't <laughs> i don't know where that puts you shane but um not normal <laughs> so. shane not normal you kind of went over some of the new stuff, but can, uh, for people who maybe if there's somebody out there who's just new to the yeah, game, tell idea. us a little bit about kind of the whole lineup and, and what you guys offer. So, you know, I, I've been, I, I didn't really have much choice in this whole matter. I've been raised on a boat since I was born. And, uh, <laughs> so my destiny was kind of picked out for me. So I've been around, around this my whole life, but, uh, um, you know, we always try to make things basically uh, that are very tolerant and very user friendly. So uh, everything we make is very speed tolerant, very, uh, um, you know, we try to, to make things that work all the time where, you know, it's not like, like the spin doctor, for instance, is uh, something that'll work from one mile an hour to four mile an hour. It's not like a, you know, old school Dodger program where you have to dial into a specific tactic to to make that thing work um you know you can run our spoons our plugs um our flashers and flies all together and in harmony so that's that's kind of what we we're just you know we're fishermen ourselves, and we're just constantly making things that that work and uh and trying to make it stuff that anybody can use whether they're a beginner or a a master you know one of the things you know, that question is a good one chris because one of the things you know i think there's going to be a lot of new anglers and i think you would agree with this shane you know people that are maybe trying great lakes fishing now that haven't done it in the past and we as manufacturers you know we take it for granted that okay well everybody knows the stuff we do well that, that's not true i mean so there's there's people that are people out there that you know that don't have you know, a box full of spin doctors already that, you know, they're, they're still learning, they're, they're going through that process, you know, for the first time, maybe where we take it for granted. I think that, that everybody kind of knows, you know, what the, what the program is. And, and just like we, you know, with Dan's book, um, that that's not the case. There's, there's new people coming in all the time. And, and in this COVID year, uh, I think that's especially now has probably never been more true than, than it is right now. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. We get calls every day. And, and some of the questions, I mean, yeah, you and I take it for granted because we've been around it and we know these these things, but something that may seem very simple and, uh, you know, we, we just take it for granted, like you said. And there's a, I mean, but thank God for, you know, the Internet is is really helping these guys because I remember, you know, what what used to take a guy. 20 years to learn he can he can dig in and and you know use dan's books or uh you know all the information that's on youtube and the internet you can learn in uh in a year or two what it used to take a guy 20 years to learn on his own yeah I, the other thing about learning you know for anybody that's new i think about this just in having fish on your boat shane it's like for me who who you know, doesn't get to do it all the time, how much I learn just in a day, you know, even if I was just hiring a charter, um, that's, that's money. That's money well spent. I can tell you that. So. Oh yeah. I tell that people, I tell that to people all the time when they call and uh, they want, you know, they're just starting or whatever. And that's probably the, 
the best thousand bucks you could spend is is uh just go go with a good guide in your port for two days and and pick his brain and and watch and learn all right shane we got a question coming in i think this is a good one it's from brad deutschman he wants to know if you could touch on trolling speeds with the size of the spoons uh i don't necessarily think that the trolling speed is um maybe I don't, I don't i'm not sure that the size of the spoon matters with trolling speed i think on any given day trolling speed can change and it doesn't matter what size spoon you're using like uh you know you might I, i'm i'm probably a slow fisherman but um you know certain days you might find that a good speed's two two and other days you might find um that good speed's three two and it doesn't necessarily matter what size spoon you're pulling it's more to do with uh maybe the aggressiveness of the fish or the conditions uh or the current um or any other factors but i, I wouldn't say that there's a a right or wrong starting point with any particular spoon blade so you're not afraid to pull a dw mag at three miles an hour if that's what if that's what they're stroking no nope. Nope. All right, nope. Scott Abarzanek says uh, he loves the uh, decoration behind you, and he's kind of salivating over six-inch spin doctors. He wants to know if there's any chance some of those will be available in the next couple of weeks for this year's early coho. Sure. Actually, I got a couple here that I can show you that we just built. Um, these are kind of modeled after a the thin fin color which is the most popular coho color of all time but these are mm -hmm. these are new um they're kind of really cool we have those in red and orange and yellow um and then there's also like this is our sample wall here so this is just one of this is a lot of custom stuff and then this wall happens to be a lot of discontinued stuff but um um trying to see here there's all kinds of uh like here's one here's one i think this one in particular went to anglers avenue but this is like a custom six inch um it's really cool and it, and it, he, he might have been getting to uh, production on though i mean the, the six inch stuff is shipping here right ahead of right ahead of coho season yeah we're we're shipping uh we're shipping them every day you're not going to find a lot of them on our website right now because um we're chasing all the store orders so i know right. our our inventory of coho stuff is pretty uh decimal as far as stuff that we have available to sell ourselves. but we're building and and shipping them to stores every day i mean there's literally they're literally going out of here every day so um i know uh like, you know, fish on bait and tackle, outdoorsmen, Captain Chucks. We sent a bunch of them to Captain Chucks yesterday. So um, they're around, but you're not, you might not see them on our website because we don't have uh, right. everything we're building is already sold. Yeah, it, it's it's a crazy, crazy year. And it's, and it's like continue whether, you know, kind of across the board is what it is, what it feels like. So. Yeah. Shane. We're to get to your website what's the website address how do they find out more about you uh it's just dreamweaverlures.com um so that's that's where uh, you can find us if anybody has any questions we're usually answering our email uh 24 hours a day um or you know a lot of times if somebody sends us a question we answer it right away if not you might have to wait till the next morning or something but we're always we're always here if you need anything. And uh, we, the, uh, I'm gonna. I'm, we, we got a great question. We got a great question. Right. Okay. So, so I'm gonna now. I know I said you got to pick all the great questions, but I'm I'm picking this one. And this comes from uh, Bruce uh, Rulu. I, I hope I pronounced your name right, Bruce. But uh, so so who is Kevin's girlfriend? <laughs> okay, that's a good story. Um, <laughs> And that's the that's the cool thing about all these lure names is every single one of them has a story, 
And but Kevin's girlfriend was um, uh, basically that flasher was originally made by Willis Carriage down in Grand Haven, that color combination. And um, and it was really, really working well one summer. And it didn't really have a name. And George Freeman's mate, George Freeman's <laughs> mate off the freestyle, is uh, his name is Kevin. And, uh, of course, it's all the young guys mating on the docks and stuff. And uh, his... He was using that flasher so much and on so many rods that uh, um, all his buddies on the dock, this is Kevin, his name's Kevin Pomorski, but uh, all the buddies on the dock accused him of sleeping with that flasher. And <laughs> it Man, I don't know what a better way to end it than that story. That's, yes. that's, that's a great one, Shane. Really appreciate you coming on. Hope you enjoyed your time. And, uh, like I said, I uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing kind of what you guys got going on for the Great Lakes the virtual Great Lakes show. Yeah, well, thanks for having. Me. Thanks, Jay. and and Bruce, please P PM us your uh, your uh, your address because I'm I'm that's that's the winner. <laughs> An email Chris at Great Lakes Fishing Podcast dot com to uh, to claim your prize. Shane, take care. Have a great rest of your Saturday, rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you.